2 Timothy chapter 3, we'll begin reading verse number 1. This know also. Friend, if you don't know what we're fixing to read is amongst us, I don't know what bubble you're living in. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Hmm? They want to defund our police. So anarchy could take over. Hmm? Wearing a badge makes you a bad guy. But wearing a mask and toting assault rifles and throwing bricks through glass plane store windows makes you a hero. Hmm? That's not in the message, just thought I'd throw that in there. Verse number four, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Let me read that again. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I don't know if you heard it this week, but it came out. Our governor, who claims to be a deacon of a church, called churchgoers ignorant. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In his mind, we're not essential. Jesus said we were. He died for us. Says, from such, turn away. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We're thankful you don't think of us as being ignorant, that you loved us with an everlasting love. Lord, we know you hate sin, but you love sinners. And God, we're thankful you bled and died for us. And God, we're thankful you mediate for us and you intercede for us. God, we're thankful that you uphold us and you strengthen us. God, you care for us and tell us to cast all our cares upon you. God, we're thankful that you're for us. And you said in the Word of God, if God be for us, who can be against us? Now, Father, as we come this morning, Lord, it's a sobering message because we live in sober times. We live in uncertain times. Lord, and we certainly can see the handwriting on the wall. Your imminent return is at hand. But Lord, there are many who are not ready to meet you. So I pray you would revive us. I pray that, God, you would give us another space of grace. And help us, Lord, to be busy about the Father's business redeeming the time and telling sinners that Jesus saves. God, you know the need of every heart here today. God, we certainly pray if there's any amongst us who are unsaved, not ready to meet God, that today would be the day of their salvation. And God, we pray for the saved folks. We know this old world, the devil, and even our flesh beats up on us. Lord, they world looks at us as the enemy of the state. We've been called deplorable, non-essential, the off-scour of the world, but God, they took you and crucified you. And you told us because they hated you, they would hate us. And so God, there may be someone here today that needs to feel the love of God precious to their soul today. I pray the sweet Holy Ghost would comfort them. There may be somebody here today that needs a balm of Gilead. I pray you'd uh, uh, put that balm all over them and help them. 
Now God help us Lord to go forth from this place with our heads held high our knees bent low and our hands pointing to Jesus and God do a work of eternal consequences amongst us and God bless your people Help us now, we pray. Use this unworthy vessel, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. And the Bible makes it clear in this chapter what will happen in the last days. And friend, I believe we're more than living in the eleventh hour of time as far as this dispensation in the Bible. I believe we're living in the last minutes of the last hour, Brother Bob. Everything that needs to be fulfilled for the Lord to come for His people has been fulfilled. Friend, the only thing that has kept the Lord from coming is He still desires to seek and, sa and to save that which is lost. We are living in God's grace. And can I say in, in, in relation to the last days, notice some things that the Apostle Paul was inspired to pin down some 2,000 years ago that describes where we are today. I want you to notice, first of all, the climate of the last days. The Bible says in verse number 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now I know I'm getting old, just turned 57. I know I don't look it but I feel 157, all right? But can I say something in my lifetime? I remember up and through my teenage years when you could go to bed at night with your door unlocked. Brother Doug, I remember going to my grandparents' house who lived in Clifton Heights about a mile from the University of Cincinnati campus sleeping on the couch in the living room with the front door wide open. I want to tell you today, you need a bazooka at the front door in that area. Huh? We're living in perilous times. That word perilous infers that they will be dangerous times. We live in a dangerous society. And you don't have to go to New York City to see danger. Can I say there's danger in the community that you live in. It also infers difficult times. Did you ever think in America you would not have the freedom to go in a store without having your face covered? Won't be long they're going to make us wear a gas mask. Won't be long you're going to have to wear an astronaut suit. Hmm? Why? Because they can. We've given them control. We won't live by the constitutional rights afforded us. We won't make a stand on what we are allowed to do. We just like sheep follow what they say. We are a country of snowflakes. You say, preacher, you wouldn't be mean. No, I'm just being honest today. I love America, but I hate what America's become. America's become soft and weak. America's become a country where elitists think they're better than everybody else, and they dictate to us how we're to live when they themselves don't live it. I heard in a debate the other night, one of our politicians said that we must wear masks only to watch him yesterday walk up and shake five people's hands without a mask on. It's called a hypocrite. It's called he knows what to tell us how to live, but he won't live it. And that word perilous infers there'll be divided times. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Now, friend, I've read the back of the book. 
I realize that there's coming a day when uh, 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 the spawn of Satan called the Antichrist is going to rule this world uh, and all nations will bow to him. The only way that America will do that is America must fall. Can I say, if you watch the news, they'll tell you there's a race problem in America. But if you go to Main Street, there really isn't. People accept people for being people. Now, there, there's some exceptions to the rule. There's always an idiot in every village. But by and large, most people are not against people based on the way they look. Most people have a problem with people by the way they act. And if you want to be respected, be respectable. It's very simple. And if the police officer pulls you over and you don't want to get shot, just don't, don't do anything stupid. Just do what they ask you to do. Hmm? My dad told me when I started driving, he said, boy, if you ever get pulled over, he said, you put your hands up on the steering wheel and whatever that police officer says to you, you say, yes, sir. First time I got pulled over, I said, yes, sir. He rebuked me. He said, I'm not an officer. I'm not a sir. Call me deputy. Yes, deputy. I said, did that work? Yeah, that was October 1982. I haven't been pulled over for a speeding ticket since. I'm deserving of it <laughs> but I highly recommend having them thin blue line stickers on your vehicle I highly recommend that uh, my daughter tried that didn't work for her <laughs> but we live in divided times why do you think they bring up race so much they want division hmm? can I help you something most of the trouble caused by the Black Lives Movement are not caused by black people. And by the way, they're showing up all over because they're paid to do it. Senator Lindsey Graham was heading in the airport last Friday to go home, do some campaigning, and he was berated by white people in the airport. Now, Big Doug, you fly somewhere every week. How can you get beyond security without having a boarding pass? You can't. No. But they were there. And they were haunting him. And finally, he says, where are you from? He's in Washington, D.C. They said, Washington State. Now, how'd they get there? Somebody paid for them to be there. The riots in Louisville that broke out, there were moving trucks showing up and they'd roll up the, uh, the back of them. There's all kinds of signs and bricks and things for them to throw. Somebody paid for that. Somebody's trying to divide the country. Can I say? From the White House to the Poor House. We live in perilous times. Can I say that word perilous infers there'll be defiled times? And can I say that word perilous infers there'll be deceitful times? I've never seen deceit like what we're seeing today. We notice in the last days the climate reveals they're the last times. Can I say that there will be conceit in the last days? Look in verse number 2. The Bible says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient parents, unthankful, unholy. I can't get on all these. I'll never get to the thought. But I can sum up that whole verse with the five-letter word pride. We live in conceited times where, where people think they're better than other people, where people refuse to admit they're wrong. When people refuse 
to embrace that God's Word is true. No, we just believe whatever we want to believe. It's dangerous thinking you know more than God. Hmm? It's dangerous thinking that you deserve everything. It says unthankful, unholy. Brother Michael, I know back in the day you played a little ball. Where does having talent and ability to shoot a basketball give you the right to tell other people how they should think or act? Listen, when it comes to whether or not you've got a right to bow before the flag and during the national anthem, why ask an athlete? Why don't you ask somebody like this man who served? Who put his life in jeopardy for the red, white, and blue? Hmm? Why don't we interview them? Somebody that's never worked a job, but because they can shoot a basketball, they think they can tell you. Or because they throw a football, or because they can hit a baseball, they think that they can tell you what the flag represents. Huh? Multi-millionaires telling you to throw bricks to a winner. Why don't we just not let them make all that money anymore and make them go work at McDonald's for a little while? Huh? They might become thankful. Uh, I know I'm meddling, but I'm, I'm fed up with it. But we're living in the last days. Notice by the climate, by the conceit, by the coldness. Look at verse 3. The Bible says, Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. It says, without natural affection. We live in a day where mamas can have a baby and leave it in a dumpster and not think anything about it. We live in a day where a young lady can be with child and go to a doctor and have it aborted, even have it murdered after it's born and not think anything wrong with it. That's without natural affection. Hmm? We live in a day and an age where a man can father a child and think he has no responsibility to that child. That's without natural affection. I never thought I'd live to see a day where it's more common than I can even imagine where grandma and grandpa are raising the children because the real mothers and real fathers could care less about them. But that's prevalent in our day without natural affection. You see, I was raised in a day where men and women got married and then had children. I was raised in a day when when they had children, they thought it was a blessing from the Lord. I uh, was raised in a day, Brother Bob, where men would go work in a very hard uh, uh, factory, uh, not because they liked it, because they wanted to put food on their table so their children didn't do without. I was raised in a day where well, if you lived off the government, you were sorry. Unless you had a physical disability. But see, we live in a day where it's cold. We've watched so much killing on TV and the movies that hearing people die doesn't affect us anymore. And people die in Cincinnati every night by drug, by drug overdoses and by people getting shot over drug deals and all kinds of things and people just tune a deaf ear to it. We live in a day where folks are cold, but that verse says a whole lot more than that. It talks about truth breakers. I remember when your word was your bond. It talks about uh, uh, being false accusers. Lord have mercy. I don't know why in the world our president signed up to be president. He's got more money than anybody in America just about. But all they've accused that man of falsely and he still wants to be president boggles my mind. 
And then it came out this week and you won't hear it on the, on the mainstream media because they don't want to tell you the truth. Uh, uh, but it came out this week, the very things they accused him of, his opponent is guilty of. I said, preacher, you shouldn't talk politics. Well, if they lived right, I wouldn't have to. If they didn't lie to us, wouldn't have to. You need to get out and vote. Your vote counts. It was the Christian vote that put Trump in the White House uh, four years ago. It may be the Christian vote that keeps him there. Whether you like him or not, listen to me. There's a lot of things in his personality I don't like. There's a lot of language he uses I don't like. Uh, but he's not a politician. He's a businessman. And he's done more for the local church than any president in my lifetime. And I go back to JFK. He's done more for the black community, more for the Hispanic community, and he's done more for America than anybody since Reagan. So I don't like that preacher. Well, you can repent. I'm just telling you the truth. Huh? I like what Miss Noreen just told me. She's the one who started all this. Blame it on her. Said her husband was driving somewhere in either Tennessee or Georgia. Said he seen a sign where it said, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, even Democrats. Did you not tell me that? She told me that. Hey, listen, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian. Hey, vote the Bible. I'll never vote for a baby killer. I ain't doing it. Because it's wrong. God told Jeremiah, for I, when I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I almost feel like preaching. It also fears corruption. Verse number four. Traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Man, it used to describe Washington, D.C. Now it describes Main Street. We live in a corrupt society. Hmm? Your rights are no longer your rights. The election's about your First Amendment. And it's about your Second Amendment. And if they mess with you, tell them that you can exercise your First Amendment because of your Second Amendment. Mm -mm. But they're coming after us. If you don't believe that, all you that, that have loved that Facebook and you get mad when I preach about it, you know they're censoring what you can listen to right now. Anything comes out negative against uh, certain politicians, you won't find it on Facebook. They censor it out. By the way, it just came out they hired 128 Chinese that came from China to do the censoring. Why? Because China's been doing it for years. But then notice the last times there'll be counterfeiting. Look at verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Look at verse 7. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. I got saved in the early 70s. When I first got saved, Brother Ray, I'd read about the Lord taking His people out of here, and I'd think, how, come, how would the world that's left behind not realize God took the church out of here? Well, fast forward almost 50 years. Everything calls itself a church at the church. See, when I first got saved, you'd go to a Methodist church, they still had the King James Bible, and they'd still preach the gospel. When I first got saved, you could go into some church of God's, and they'd preach the gospel. When I first got saved, you could go just about to, in any true Christian denominational church, they had the Bible, they preached the gospel. But as we live here today, even Baptist churches don't use the Bible anymore. And can I help you with something? The Holy Ghost only wrote one book, uh, and He only uses one book to bring people into repentance. Uh, uh, we're begotten by an incorruptible seed. Uh, there are a lot of places uh, that has pews, uh, that has songbooks, uh, that has steeples on the roof, uh, but they're not preaching the gospel. Uh, uh, they have a form of godliness. Uh, a form is an empty shell. Uh, uh, they have a form, but they don't have the master. Hey, 
I'm here to tell you, friends, uh, there's a lot of people that's been counterfeited, uh, been sold a bill of goods, uh, been made twofold the childs of hell, uh, and they're going to die and go to hell thinking they was okay. I'm going to preach on this thought, and I'll preach more than I will preach, but I want to preach on this thought. It's time to face the times. It's time to face the times. See, Brother Bob, we've gotten to the, way, to the place we are in America because for decades, Christians became ostriches and buried their heads in the sand. Uh, they wouldn't stand up. They wouldn't be accounted for. Uh, uh, they wouldn't exercise their uh, uh, constitutional rights. And therefore, our freedoms got whittled away little by little to the point we've got to where Christians are anemic and we're afraid to say anything. Friend, we're living in the last days. It's time we face the times. It's time we come to realization the Lord is coming and we're way behind where we need to be doing the Lord's work. Let me say this first of all. In lieu of the hour, believers must be provoked. The Bible says in Romans 13, 11, and that knowing the time, what time? We're, we're at the end of time. The last days for the church age. And knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Uh, listen, when you got born again, your soul got saved. Uh, but the Apostle Paul is talking about the redemption of the body. Uh, there's coming a day uh, when the Lord's going to take us to heaven uh, and He's going to give us a spiritual body fashioned like His own. Uh, hey, the body's going to be redeemed. Uh, hey, hallelujah, when you got born again, your soul got redeemed. Uh, it's time we wake up. Uh, it's time we realize uh, our salvation Salvation's nearer than when we believed. Uh, we need to get busy about God's business. Uh, we need to be provoked. Uh, if we don't wake up, God's liable to put Biden in office. And by the way, it's God who sets up kings. Mm, if you don't start getting right with God and doing right now, He's liable to really bring persecution on the church. It's high time we wake up. We need to be provoked. Hebrews 10, 24 says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. We ought to be inspired by folks that are living right, doing right, seeking God. And we ought to say, That's what I ought to do. Do right. In lieu of the hour, believers must be provoked. We must pray. 1 Peter 4, 7, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Oh, I would that somebody get a hold of the Master. Somebody truly gets serious about calling on God. God does hear and answer prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We must get a hold of God. Uh, Luke 10, 2, Jesus said this, Therefore he said he unto them, The harvest truly is great. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. We need to pray for revival. Pray that God would raise up men that could preach and would win people to God. Uh, pray for our loved ones. Pray for our neighbors. Pray for our country. We need to pray, pray, pray. Because we're living in the last days. You know to solve the division? Prayer. Because when you start praying for people, all of a sudden God will give you a heart for them. Hmm. Need to pray. Need to be provoked. Believers need to pursue the Lord. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 4.29, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find Him, if thou seek Him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. The Bible says, Seek and you shall find. Isaiah 55, 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. How come it is we pursue everything in the world but God? We need to seek after the Lord. You know what? You can seek him while you're, while you're driving down the car. You can seek him uh, 
uh, while you're walking through a shopping center. You can seek Him while you're on your job. You can seek Him. You can have an attitude towards where is the Lord. You need to pray. You need to pursue the Lord. You need to be provoked. Can I say this? It's high time that believers put God's Word into practice. I said this in my Sunday school class. We get up on Sunday, we get ready, we come to church, we sit down, and in our minds we think we've done something. We'll listen to preaching, but we don't let preaching affect us. James said we need to be doers of the Word, not hearers only. And I use the illustration in my Sunday school class. It's just like going to the doctor, and the and you got to go in there, and you got to wear a mask, and they're wearing masks, huh? I grew up the only one you trust that wore a mask was Batman and the Lone Ranger. You know what I'm saying, huh? And you got to wear a mask, and they take your temperature, and then they give you the blessed, wonderful joy of standing on a scale. Then they take you in, they take your blood pressure. And then the doctor comes in, and the doctor, you start giving them your symptoms, and the doctor may have to run some tests, or the doctor tells you what is wrong with you, and the doctor gives you a prescription. And if you never fill it, and you never take it, you're never going to get any better. Why well, come to church and hear what thus saith the Lord and never do it? It's not going to help you. And it certainly isn't going to help those around you. We need to... Put God's Word into practice. The Bible says in Exodus 35 and 1, And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do them. You understand, you're not going to get jewels in heaven because you had a copy of the Word of God. You'll get jewels in heaven because you did the Word of God. Do you know what a privilege it is to even have a copy of it? Do you know most of the known world does not have a copy of the Word of God in their language? It is a privilege to have it. But friend, unless you read it and do what it says, it profits you nothing. The Bible says in Leviticus 19.37, Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. I am the Lord. Hebrews 10.25, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. It's important that you come. It's important that you're exhorted, that you're uh, charged to take what you hear and do something with it. But you got to do it. you got to do it. you got to do it. I used to get under conviction looking at all them weights in front of my desk in my office at the house. So I had a choice. Start putting them into practice or give them to Seth. That's what I did. They wasn't benefiting me. Might as well let that boy get built up a little bit, huh? Yeah, they was only used when Christian used them, and then we didn't have enough for him, you know, when he got to benching 300 and something pounds, you know. So what, what, are, you, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, I joined, I joined the gym. I was doing good. Listen, that, I was going five days a week till COVID hit. I was doing good, but now I'm paying for a gym and not using it. That is useless. Huh? Hmm? Well, if you come to church and don't do what the Bible says, it's useless in your life. Now, you can throw off on people going to the golf course on Sunday and people mowing their grass on Sunday and people watching football on Sunday and not going to the house of God. But can I say the greater condemnation is on you and I that do come to the house of God, hear the word of God, and don't do it. Because if we start doing it and living the word, guess what? We'll start impacting them. But really what they're doing is impacting us because while you're here and not doing the word, you're envying them because they are on the golf course and they are doing something productive. And you're not. In lieu of the times, we need to put God's Word into practice. In lieu of the times, we need to persuade sinners. Mark 16, 15, And he saith unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, we can't go into all the world. That's why we support all their missionaries. But we can't go across the street. We can go to the next cubicle on the job. We can go to our classmates. We can tell folks that Jesus saves 
Jesus saves. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians 5.11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also made manifest in your consciences. Are you persuading anybody about the Lord? Hmm? You tell anybody, say, Preacher, I don't know what to say. we got a bunch of tracks out there. Just give them one of them. Do something. Because people are going to die and go to hell. And I thought about this last night. In lieu of the times, we need to persevere. Time to buckle up, buttercup. Things aren't going to get better. going to get worse. And in my heart of hearts, I believe Trump's going to win by landslide. I don't care what the polls say. But if he doesn't get a house... With the, with the Senate, all you're going to hear is impeach, 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 Russia, 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 poor Joe Biden, poor this, poor that, blah, 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 blah. Huh? Things aren't going to get better till we get right with God. Our nation isn't going to get better till our nation becomes a Christian nation again. And friend, I don't, I don't see where we're headed down that path. I did hear where Trump said this. I thought this was great. Happened yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. I saw the video clip. A guy hollered out that he was the most popular person in the world. And he said, no, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. He said, no, I, I, no I'm not. He said, Jesus Christ is. That's what the president said. Now, that other joker don't even know his own name, let alone who Jesus is. Are you listening? Huh? I saw a clip where his wife was trying to do his campaign for him and all he was doing was pacing behind her because he didn't even know where he was. And you think he's going to be able to stand up to Russia and China and, and be able to uh, stand up to NATO and all them places that Trump's... Uh, how about the peace, another peace treaty in the Middle East yesterday? Huh? Obama wouldn't even let the Jews come to the White House. I'm telling you, you need to pray. need to pray. But we need to persevere. Colossians 4 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 2 Timothy 3 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And 1 Corinthians 15 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And Matthew 5 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We can't wait for somebody else to be revived. It's up to us. And if you're waiting for somebody else to win your loved ones or neighbors or co-workers to the Lord, friend, nobody's going to win. That's your job. Let your light so shine. And persevere. Make up your mind you're going to live for Jesus regardless of what comes. Make up your mind if He opens a door, you're going to walk through it to His honor and to His glory. Friends, we're living in the last days. I'd like to be able to tell you next week we're going to do this or do that, but friend, to be, be honest with you, the Lord could come back today. Are you ready to meet Him? Say, preacher, I'm saved. I didn't ask you that. Are you ready to meet Him? Are you living as unto Christ? What have you done for the kingdom of God this week? Are you ready to meet Him? And then I will ask you this question. Are you saved? So preacher, I'm religious. Well, that's, that's wonderful. But I didn't ask you that. Are you saved? Have you ever truly realized you weren't saved and you got down on your face before God and asked Him to save you? Have you repented of your sins and asked Jesus to save you? The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you born again? Have you passed from death unto life? Have you been made a new creature in Christ? So, well, I don't know. Then you're not. Paul, or John said, These things have I written that you may know that you have eternal life. I'm glad I know that I'm saved. I could take you back to where I got saved. Huh? Been 47 years ago, but I can still take you there. Why? Because that's where I met Jesus. Changed my life for all of eternity. Do you know Jesus? Friend, I don't know how much more time you got. I'd run to an altar and trust Jesus this morning.
Christian friend, I'd run to an altar and say, God, help me to be the example I need to be because somebody around me is going to die and go to hell. We're living in the last days, friend. I mean, the handwriting, I could have I brought out every one of those things in those four verses, five verses, and tell you they're going on right now in Florence, Kentucky. Friend, we're living in the last days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? He's coming. He's coming. Are you ready to meet Him? Friend, you can be. You can be. I remember Frank Stinson. I'll close with this. Frank's name's on that banner back there. Remember Frank came in one time. He said, Preacher, I don't want to limp into heaven. Boy, so many Christians are going to limp into heaven, and not because we've been wounded in the battle, but because we haven't been what we should be. We ought to go out in a blaze of glory. We ought to go out with our heads held high, saying, Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Are you ready to meet him? Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Friend, if you're not saved, why don't you come? We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. If you're saved, what are you doing so other people can get saved? Are you ready to meet the Lord? He's coming. Folks are coming to the altar. As folks come, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless your name. Lord, I can't imagine how you feel when you look at this old sin-cursed world. I know when I look around how indignant I become. Lord, I know the only reason you haven't come for your church is you're still seeking to save that which is lost. God, there may be somebody here today unsaved. Lord, I pray for the sweet Holy Ghost of God to snuggle up close to them, reveal their lost condition to them, but then reveal unto them that, God, you will save them from their sin. And God, they can get born again today. God, I pray for those that have been born again they'd realize time is short and it's high time we be provoked out of our coldness it's time Lord that we wake up and be stirred it's time that we pray it's time that we seek the Lord it's time that we start telling sinners they need to be saved oh God revive our hearts for thy glory help us to truly be Christ like Help us to impact our world and make a difference. God, you know the need of every heart in here today. God, I pray folks would do business with God. Get glory now, Father. Bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.